What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to do a little water cooling deal. So, I already started to do a bend as you can see here. Um, I put the insert in and cut it down to size. I went and got all the fittings and everything that we need. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I have enough of these. So I went ahead and ordered six more of uh, these these compression fittings and I went ahead and ordered six more tubes of the blue because well we're going to probably need a couple more I have not water cooled in a long time I haven't messed with hard tubing in a while but anyway I got these things and that allow me to bend it at a 180 a 90 and a 45 so what you do is you can heat the tube up set the tube inside and then bend it and make your bends so that's what i was working on today now this piece right here that i'm trying to maneuver um, it's going to sit inside of the pump and then come up and run to the radiator dude i wanted to finish this bend um this is peg you guys want to stick with peg don't go acrylic acrylic tubes they act way different. They're harder to maneuver. They're harder to bend. They'll crack easier. I mean, they can be a real pain in the butt. So we're not going to do that. But anyway, we're going to use our heat gun here. And this is going to be kind of tricky to try to film and use the heat gun properly. So I'll probably have to set the camera down somewhere so I can get an angle. Uh, accessories, guys. Accessories we have more than enough. I ordered a couple of these kits that came with a whole bunch of little stuff um, I decided to go with a chrome and blue and black kind of finish. So like here's our uh, our flow Flow indicator we're going to use that and then we got our on off at the bottom. This is our our valve our drain valve That's going to go in there um, Then you got a breathing valve, which is pretty cool that allows you to uh, breathe. Basically, when you're compressing the system and you're pouring water into it, that water is forcing the air somewhere. Well, if you have it sealed, then you're just gonna keep like a bubble built up. Well, if you built in a little breathe valve, it'll let all that air out, which is pretty cool. So, I guess I'll go ahead and do a couple things while we're sitting here chilling. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to leave me a like for this stuff, man. I appreciate y'all. Okay, so the tube is just now starting to get heated to where I can bend it. And you can control how much heat gets to it by how close or how far away you put the tube. But we're just going to kind of keep heating it up. I don't want too much of it. It's nice and slow. Alright, let's see if maybe we can get a bend out of it because it looks pretty loose right now and I just need kind of like a nice little bend here that's all we need let's give it a little push okay slow guys you want to do it slow when you're bending stuff you want to take your time doing it I just don't concentrate the heat. Hold on, let me turn that off. Sorry. I don't just concentrate my heat on this area. I try to heat up the whole area, but also concentrate a little bit here in the middle. And you want to make your bends slowly. What will happen is, is if you try to heat it up too fast and make the bend too fast, 
what you'll get right in here is you'll get like a jelly roll, like a fat roll. Like on a person, you know, a person has a fat roll when they when they scrunch over. That's what you'll end up with. A nice little fat roll right here. And you definitely do not want a fat roll to end up in it. And also, if you do it too fast, you'll end up with, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I almost start to get one right there. It's like a microscopic heat bubble that builds up inside the plastic. Um, and that's from overheating it too fast. And usually what I do for my core, like the, uh, the part that goes inside of it, I'll wet it. Like I'll run some water around it or saliva or whatever so that way it slides in and out of that tube easier. But we need this to bend to the left and then what we're going to do is we're going to heat this part up to bend up. So the idea is that it's going to run up, okay, like that, and then bend and then this is going to bend again and go in the upright position and run to the rad. So it's just kind of like one of those processes where it's real slow. And I haven't done this in a while. So, I mean, I went ahead and ordered, what, six more of these from Alpha Cool. It was like 38 bucks for six of these from Alpha Cool. And uh, we're running a, uh, a half inch diameter on this is what we're running. What's cool is that we got one drive that we're going to use. Oh no, not just one. We're going to use two of them. Oh yeah, two. Oh yeah, two. <laughs> Green is so pretty and blue. Let's cut this. Use our tool. And what you wanna do, instead of taking it and trying to cut it like a pair of scissors, like trying to crush down on it, the best way to do it is just to sit it in there apply your blade with a little bit of pressure and then with your other hand turn it okay and what you're doing is called scoring and you want to press down while you're scoring it all right give it a little squeeze while you turn it and what you'll do is you'll cut it just like that it'll come right off nice and easy cut just a little bit off all right you can use this tool to clean that up a little. Okay, so you just run that around like that. And you just kind of want to like that. And what that does is that puts a bevel on the inside. Okay, see how it's already starting to clean that side up a little? And then you can flip it and do the reverse side. So I successfully got that in cut off and straightened. As you can see, it's nice and even now. Uh, what I want to attempt to do is I got it in the 90 degree jig. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it up, push the pipe further in, let it sit into place. And then I'm going to attempt to continue the bend all the way down until I get an exact 90 degree angle, which is what we are shooting for. Okay, I think that's plenty warm. So we're gonna slide it down, put it in the jig, and we're going to slowly bend it until I get the angle that I wish. So a little bit at a time. Okay, so we need to put a little more heat into it because we're almost there where we want it. Just kind of heat it up. This is why I ordered extra tubes because I don't want to be stressed to try to get it perfect every time, especially when you're trying to film. It just won't happen. So we want to heat it up. Okay. All right, and then let's give it a little bend. 
slowly. Don't want to force it. Just do it slowly until we get the angle that we wish. And then you want to hold it, okay, into place because when it cools down, it will keep its shape. If you were to just bend it and let it go and cool down, then usually it will it'll be a little bit bigger than the angle that you are trying to seek. So we just want to keep it like this for a few seconds. Alrighty, and then let's see if our angle came out right. And there you have it. It sure did. Nice 90 degree tube bend. And what we'll do is we'll reheat it, sit it back in the jig, and make sure that I hit 90 degrees perfect on it. So if you guys were wondering how a compression fitting works, it works a lot different than a, um, whoops. A compression fitting works a lot different than a, a barb fitting. A barb fitting, the tube just slides over it and then this other ring can go over the top and then it compresses it down. But this works a little bit different. With a compression fitting, this part screws into whatever you want it to go into, your pump, block, whatever. And then inside you can see that there's a couple of O-rings inside of there. Okay, so this screws in to your pump or whatever you want it to screw into then what you do is you take your tube and your tube will sit down inside there okay it'll sit inside of those two o-rings and then you will take the cap the top part of it all right and an o-ring sits inside of there okay and then what you do is you put the cap over the top okay and then this screws down. And then this will screw down. Well, it doesn't want to cooperate with me, of course. And then you will screw it down like this. All right, and that O-ring that's up top here, right? What that does is when you put this cap down, it will squeeze that O-ring against that top part right there. And it's very important to have that O-ring in there or you just will not make a good connection. So anyway, this will screw all the way down, okay? And with that O-ring on top, squeezing that, it'll make it, see, I can't, look, I'm trying my hardest to pull that apart and I can't, and I, I don't even have that top O-ring in there. But that's basically how a compression fitting works. The, you know, the name explains it all, compression. It literally will squeeze. Once you put that ring, that, tube, that other O-ring inside there, it will squeeze it against this tube and against this fitting. And that's what makes a tight fitting. And that is how a compression fitting works. Works off of compressing those O-rings tight against that tube. And it's also just as important is to make sure that that tube is sitting as flat and as even against those inside O-rings. And then, of course, you have an O-ring on the outside to seal it there. And then that will just screw into whatever you want and you're good to go. Compression fitting 101.